Welcome, Gun Runner. Hello everybody, Kieran aka The Laird here and uh, I'm back with a hardware review for you and in my recent Q&A video that I did I promised all you lovely people that I was going to do some more hardware reviews and one of the ones that I mentioned that I was going to do was the Spectrum Plus 3 so voila there is a Spectrum Plus 3 um, here in front of the fluffy cushions of doom and Yes, so um, let's go back a, a moment um, into my own history with the Spectrum just to give uh, a bit of a background and how I ended up with a, a Spectrum Plus 3. Now, my first Spectrum was one of these, like many people, a rubber key Specky, um, which I've brought actually here just to show the shot size difference between the, the, the rubber key and the Plus 3, actually, because the Plus 3 is the biggest model, as you can see. Now, I had one of these only for a very short time because I was actually given one um, by a family friend. We called him uncle, but he wasn't my real uncle. He was actually my godfather, but yeah, kind of a family friend. And uh, he gave us one and um, he uh, he didn't think it worked. Um, I tested, I remember testing it and the keyboard membrane had gone in it. So only some of the keys worked. So I ordered another membrane, but even after I ordered another membrane, um, I still couldn't get it to work properly. And as it turned out, I'd asked for a Spectrum for Christmas. So um, I waited, and a few months later, I got a Specky Plus 2A uh, for Christmas, which I, there shared, which I actually shared with my younger brother and older sister. So we had it like a, a present between us because we'd wanted a computer for, for ages. So yeah, so that's that's basically how it went with um with my Spectrum story, and then years and years and years and years later, when I suddenly started to dis to collect um, retro stuff again, um, I picked up a rubber key fairly early just because I love the aesthetic of them. I love the way they look, so I wanted one um, for that reason mainly. Yeah, Although this this one does work absolutely perfectly, it's in full working order, it's in pretty good condition. Um, so yeah, I, I I can't even remember how much I paid for it. I came with a load of games. Uh, I also picked up um, a grey plus two, which I never had back in the day. I had the black plus two A. Uh, a lot, quite a few of my friends had the grey plus two though. Um, but oh, what I always had really, really wanted was a plus three. I dreamed about having a plus three when I was a kid because of the the disc drive and not having to load from tapes, which, as we all know, was an absolute pain in the ass. So I finally, finally got one. Um, in more recent years but I've been looking for quite a while and um, I was quite shocked to see the um, extortionate prices that Plus 3s were selling for online and I had kind of given up on the idea of getting one because they seemed to go for such high prices. I can only guess that the price was so high because they're, they're one of the rarer Spectrum models, a bit like the Toast Rack I suppose which goes for, for silly money, the, um, the the original 128k model. Um, and I guess people like the idea of having a disc one as well. So, but yeah, they were going for absolutely silly money um, online. So after doing a load of research, I discovered that there is a was a key fault with plus threes, and that a lot of the ones you find on eBay that are listed as broken aren't in fact broken at all. And all it needs is a new belt to drive the floppy disk drive. And apparently this is it's literally a, an, an elastic band. It's it's not elastic, but it's very, very similar to. And you can order them for a couple of pounds. They're just so easy. I picked up a pack of two, and I think it was like two quid or something. And um, everything online says so they were actually quite easy to, to replace. You do have to use a pair of tweezers, and it is a bit fiddly, but it's certainly not impossible. And I was able to do it... Um, I think it took me about 10 minutes to get it on, but once I got it on, works worked perfectly. So I've, I've gone ahead of myself there, really. But yes, I, I looked for a broken one online, found it. I paid, I think I paid about 60 quid for that when the ones that were um, 
fully working we're going for well over 100 so um yeah i probably paid about half the price i would have paid so yeah i was very pleased to get one for that replaced the the um the drive belt and it worked like a dream um no issues whatsoever so well happy with that the only other thing that i will actually mention which is probably another reason why i got it quite cheap was as you'll see is it looks like somebody had put like a hot plate or something on the back of it <laughs> it's really really strange because it's almost exactly circular uh, i can only see what happened because it literally does it like the plastic has been melted a little bit but apart from that it's actually really good condition it's even still got the serial number sticker on it there so all the feet are on it and yeah um i mean there's a little bit of wear on the logo there but nothing nothing too serious so yes i was pretty pleased um with it all together especially at that price <laughs> So this was obviously the last model of the of the Spectrum uh, that was built um, by Amstrad. Obviously, when Amstrad took over um, the computer division of Sinclair Research, they sold through the existing stock of of the um, the one to eight K models, the Toastrax as people call them, and then they produced their own models, which started with the Grey Plus Two, and then the Black Plus Two A, and the Black. Uh, plus three i say black it's more of a dark gray i suppose but and the plus two a was basically the same hardware as the plus three but with a tape drive instead of a disk drive so that caused um some compatibility problems that the plus two didn't have the gray plus two didn't have because of the changes in the rom and the bios and things are adding in dos and things like that so it did cause a few a few issues with compatibility i do remember being quite quite frustrated um, when I was a kid and I had my Plus 2A, uh, sometimes I would buy a game and it wouldn't work. And I did have a magazine, I've got a feeling it was a Sinclair user actually, that had a list of games that didn't work on the Plus 2A. And um, that was quite useful, um, but there was still the odd odd one that I missed or, or didn't remember was on the list or something like that. But I always just took them back and changed them, so I suppose it wasn't too much of an issue. Uh, but there we go. So let's have a, a bit of a closer look at the the. the plus three as well so obviously it has 120k 128k of memory um a lot more than the the original models which were obviously 16k and 48k um variations it obviously has a disk drive as we've already established rather than tapes and i'll go into that more in a moment um because that's without doubt the most interesting thing about it that we need to talk about in more detail um, so what else do we got on the back? We've got ports. So we've got disk B. So you can actually add a second disk drive if you want. Printer, self-explanatory. The uh, socket for the power supply. Expansion bus. RS-232 MIDI. So yes, you can actually connect it up to MIDI. Um, there is, I think there is a few music sequences for the um, 128K models. So you can... Yeah, hook it up to midis, uh, aux. That, the only use that I actually know for that um, socket was the light gun, the Magnum light phaser plugged into that socket there. RGB socket, so we can plug it into monitors or TV or a SCART connection. Gives a really, really nice picture. So that's great to have on that. None of the old um, connecting by RF and a fuzzy, you know, fuzzy lines and trying to get trying to get the um the, the picture right and all that nonsense no we just um you just plug it in and it comes up straight away lovely there is your rf socket if you do want to use it old school and, and tune it in and last of all tape sound and that you can put headphones in it but it's, it's it's very quiet so you'd have to amplify it so if you do actually want to get any decent sound out of it in that way you'd need to take that into an amplifier and then um, plug your headphones or whatever into that 
But the main thing that that's useful, you haven't already guessed, is actually so you can connect the plus three up to a tape deck. There was a special lead. Rather than having the, the ear and mic, which you had on the plus two, where you needed both uh, for save and load, this socket does both. And there was actually a special lead you got where it was uh, a, a socket on one end, the single, and then it went into the dual ones for connecting up to your cassette recorder on the other end. So, yes, very useful. So if you did upgrade from the old... Um, models to this one you could still use all your tape games if you've got that that cable well the ones that are compatible which was most to be fair um, on this end we have the uh, infamous SJS joystick ports so you could only use Sinclair joysticks you couldn't use your old Kempston joysticks that you might have had from having a rubber key although they weren't too hard to find I mean I myself used a, a Cheetah 125 plus um, because it had a cable so you could uh, plug it well, I had the cable that split off into two with one socket was a Kempston and one was a Sinclair. So you could, I had two 125 plus, one from one, one for me, one for my brother. So we used that. A reset button, which might not seem that special, but it was actually because the original models, the uh, rubber keys and, and such like, the only way you could reset them was actually by taking the power out and plugging it back in again, which wasn't really a good idea. Uh, so you actually had a proper reset button. And... Uh, there's nothing on the other side, there's just some screws and we've seen the bottom. So that, that's everything we need to see about, about that. So let's discs. I have some discs. Actually, here I have the Amstrad compilation here, which is uh, these. I believe it was Dixon's specifically who bundled these with the plus threes with a load of ocean games. So you've got Daily Super Test 1, Daily Super Test 2, Cosmic Auto, Gift from the Gods, Maelstrom and Nomad. And uh, I've got a few, quite a few plus three games, actually, but I've, I've put a few. I've got a few just sitting in this wallet. Um, so yes, so here's the, the, the discs. And this is what, what made it special because these are obviously um, a proprietary disc. They're different to what you'd expect. You're not the big floppy discs that you got with the C64 and the, the, the Atari 8 bits. They're not the 3.5 inch discs that you got with the Atari ST and Amiga and PC. These are Amstrad's own three inch disc. They were used by the Spectrum Plus 3 um, the original use of them was obviously the uh, CPC-664 and CPC-6128 used these discs. The Amstrad PCWs, the original models that is, also used these discs. And I believe the Tatung Einstein, for some reason, used these Amstrad 3-inch discs. And they were quite expensive because you could pretty much only get them from Amstrad. I mean, the funny thing is you can even see, and you see this with a lot of commercial games is that you can actually see through that label a little bit if you can see it and just there it says amsoft and literally a lot of the software companies would buy the discs from amstrad and they would already have the labels on them so they would stick their own label over the top you'll actually see this with loads of loads of discs i don't have my other disc that i've got like that or the disc i've got here no it's actually not that one's actually a slightly different disc as you can see but a lot of them were like that and had the um yeah and had the label stuck over the old amstrad label and one interesting thing about these is you'll see they're double-sided. So they were double-sided discs, but you had to actually turn the disc over. So you can see it there. Um, you turn them over, and they've got this side, side one and side two, um, which is quite interesting. And also these bits aren't covered like they were on, on 3.5-inch discs. So that's another difference. And uh, they have these the right protect switches at the top. That one doesn't, um, but this one does. So, yeah. Uh, You've got those as well, so you could save onto them or not if you didn't want to accidentally wipe them. So yeah. <laughs>
so let's talk about those games a little more i've obviously already shown you a couple of clips as this as this video has gone on and i think it's worth mentioning a little bit more about games because what um happened in the early years of the spectrum was that we uh got games that were optimized when played on 128k machines so they would play fine on your old rubber key then when played on the 128k machines so if they are playing a plus two or a plus three or a the toast rack they would have enhanced features this usually meant music um was was quite often the, the thing that they added and on quite a lot of games as well no multi loads which was a godsend you didn't have to load each level in one after another because it would just load the whole lot and store them in memory the only thing that did mean is that the games would take bloody ages to load i think there was games that took pretty much half an hour to load um when they loaded in all the levels as uh, as it went on, more people got 128k spectrums, and we did actually see a lot more 128k only games. And uh, with the discs, as far as they're concerned, the availability of these was um, pretty much most full price games were also available on disc once the plus three came in. Uh, so I don't think it was a big deal for the, the software houses to to do them because they were already using these discs. For the 6128 so that kind of get, did the plus three a bit of a favor there um they were obviously sh this plus three was sharing exactly the same game code with um with the other models anyway so it's pretty simple to put these onto a disc there was also quite a few companies who produced compilations such as this one down here um of older games so they made them available for plus three so there's actually quite a few companies who did like plus three game packs that had a load of their older games on a disc but they were never improved or anything like that which is a bit of a shame you literally just got a load of 48k games um but bunged on a disc they work with a plus three that's what this is uh none of those games i don't if i remember rightly are improved at all for the um for the plus three they just um they just the original 48k versions and and that's it and they play uh but one thing worth mentioning is, uh, and I'll actually show this, I've, I've got some adverts, is, is the price. Um, the games weren't too bad. I think they the games where a full price game is retailing at $9.99. The plus three version was usually $14.99. So you pay a bit more for it. But that was still cheaper than, say, what ST games uh, and Amiga games were selling for at the time, which is sort of 20 to 25 So they weren't badly priced. But the computers were, were, were very expensive. I mean, I think... They, it was over 200 quid when it first launched and then it did come down at 1.2 200 but i seem to remember that when it first launched it was a, i think it was about 249 or something like that i could be wrong but certainly it wasn't far off the price of an st and it made you wonder who's going to buy one of those over an atari st and i you know and that's it proved to be the case because the atari st at that point was um was Britain's best-selling home computer. And I don't know exactly how many Plus 3s were sold, but given by the price they go for the availability of eBay and stuff, it can't have been a massive amount. And um, the um, you know the games are also incredibly hard to find as well on, on eBay. If you go looking for Plus 3 games, they're, they're pretty difficult to find. Again, they go for high prices. So, yeah, I, I don't think a huge amount of them were sold. Um, I don't think it was a massively successful... Uh, computer but it was certainly a really really nice idea Another thing that I want to talk about actually is, well, it's it's for all of the one to eight K machines, not just the plus three, but the way they loaded games and etc. was completely different to the forty eight Ks. Obviously, with the forty eight K machines, you had this this command prompt, I suppose, system, the old nineteen eighty two Sinclair Research, and then you know you typed in 
you load or you save or whatever and you had you know you were using basic to to operate your computer to load programs save programs etc 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 but the 128k models had their own menu system which was actually diff slightly different on the 128k the plus two and the plus three because the plus three had dos so it, it had extra features for loading saving from dos it also had a, a RAM disk, which was actually quite good. In basic, you could basically store stuff in this RAM disk and then load it. And I, I can remember myself when I used to, to, to play around and make games in basic. You could literally write a little program. You could save it into the RAM disk, carry on doing something, and then recall it and merge it back into your program, um, which is quite a cool thing. It was kind of like a, a multitasking in a, in a way. Um but yeah, it was it was a really cool thing. So that was a, a big change was the was was the menu driven GUI, I suppose, in, in many ways that the um, the one to eight K models had that made loading saving easier and also allowed you to select um, plus not plus uh, a forty eight K mode for compatibility. And there was a calculator for some reason. I'm not really sure what the purpose of that was, but yes, there was a calculator. And the only other big difference that should probably be mentioned is a lot of people didn't like this. It didn't bother me, but a lot of people didn't like this. And I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute, actually. But you'll know one big thing you will notice between the difference between these two is that there are no um, uh, commands on the keys. So the only thing you see on the keys with the, the, the plus three is there are a few that need it. So you've got load run and code they're the only ones there because they are important for the 48k compatibility because if you load in a basic program you quite often need to run it so you load self-explanatory and the reason code was there is because there were some games that required you to do load and then the file name and code very few it was only some very early games but they they, they left that there nonetheless you'd know which buttons were which, but a lot of people hated the fact they didn't put all the other commands on. The only other things, obviously, in the keys are are you know, your symbol shifts, like your pound sign and your question mark, etc., etc. A lot of people hated that there was no commands, which I never understood because you had new basic for the one to eight K machines, which I will actually show you as well, where you could just type everything in you didn't have the old command system from the 48k where you press the button that word came up you press the button that word came up you had to use symbol shifts and extend mode and cap shift to get different commands to change the colors all that kind of thing um you could just type like any other version of basic basically and you had a command line editor and all of that thing kind of things that made um made the basic so much better and uh, so it's easier to use and there was actually an extended command set for 128k basic as well which obviously included sound commands um was the main thing that 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 added in but there was also some commands for using with dos uh, and that's actually what caused some of the compatibility problems because there was these commands for some reason were mapped onto user-defined graphics so if you were playing some 48k basic games um Funny enough, including some of the ones that came with the, the plus twos, like Alien Destroyer, it would come up with the words, for example, Spectrum or uh, Play, which is a sound command, instead of coming up with a user-defined graphic, which was rather confusing and strange. But I digress. The only thing that I, I think they should have done, which would have been useful, is to have put the colours um, on, on here somewhere, because... Uh, that's I always had to refer to something for the colours when I was using the basic because it was hard to remember which which one was which for the colours and uh, yeah uh, that that's that's that's, that's it. actually actually one more thing with the keys is but obviously this is an obvious one is because the the plus three has the full extended keyboard there's some things keys that you have on this that you didn't have on the um, the uh, forty eight case for example you've now got proper cursor keys. Um, which is good and you've now got things like delete being a separate key which is useful edit graph you know um, you've got two cap shift keys two symbol shift keys so you've got all the extra keys because uh, it's a proper proper keyboard and the keyboard yeah oh, they're, they're not bad but you hear that they're, they're very kind of cheap 
um, a typical Amstrad thing, I suppose. You know, you're not going to get some something to the quality of, say, the BBC Micro keyboard here or the Atari, you know, 800 keyboard. This is, you know, a, a cheap and cheerful keyboard, but it's certainly a hell of a lot better than than, than using these dead flesh lumps on that. So, in summary, the Spectrum Plus 3, is it is it worth owning a Spectrum Plus 3? I'd say, yes, it is. It's it's a really cool novelty. If you can get one for a decent price, um, it's quite nice being able to load from discs and stuff. I suppose in this day and age, with the divide devices and such like, you don't really need disc drives because you can just plug that in the back and play every game from scratch. But something I really like about the, the Plus 3, it's kind of the boss. It's kind of the daddy of all the Spectrums. It's the last model. Um which makes it cool in itself. I think it's great having the disk drive. And what actually some people do is they get ones where the disk drive is faulty, it doesn't work anymore, and they put it in there. They put the the, the you know the flash drive in where the disk drive was. So it's actually all enclosed in one case. And they have a little screen and everything on them, which I think is really cool. So that's another thing you can do with a Plus 3. If you're into modding and um, you want an all-in-one unit without some ugly thing uh, sticking out the back of it. And... Um, that's basically it really. I hope you enjoyed my look at the Spectrum Plus 3 and uh, I'll see you all again for another video very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like it, then please consider visiting my Patreon and making a pledge. You'll even get access to a host of exclusive content there too. I've been the Retro Laird, I hope you've enjoyed watching and I'll see you all again very soon.